Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Ashley again, and I'm here for our last video where we get to learn about more countries and how they celebrate Christmas. So, can you believe that we've made it all the way around the world after this video? I've had a lot of fun, and I hope you have too. So let's talk about where all we've gone so far. So, if you remember all the way back to the beginning, we started off in Australia and New Zealand, and we learned that they like to spend Christmas at the beach, and we even sang Australian jingle bells. Then we headed over to Africa and we learned about Kwanzaa and made a Canary candle holder. And then we went over to Asia and we made a Chinese lantern. We learned about dreidels for Hanukkah and we heard about Rangoli sand art in um, India for Diwali. The last time I met with you, we went over to Europe and found out so much information about how they celebrate Christmas there. We learned that kids leave shoes outside with some carrots and hay for St. Nicholas's horse, and then they get little prizes on December 5th. In Iceland, they have 13 silly Santa Clauses. There's an old witch that flies on a broom in Italy that delivers their presents. And in Sweden, we learned that the oldest child wears a wreath with candles on her head on St. Lucia Day, and we even made our own crown. And we made Christmas crackers from England. So this time we're getting a little bit closer to home. We're headed over to this area. We're gonna talk about South America, the Caribbean, and North America. So we're gonna end up going back home today. So, as we've traveled around the world, we've gone to Australia, Germany, England, the Netherlands, Russia, France, Italy, and Sweden. And today, we're going to travel to Canada, Mexico, Brazil, and back to the USA. And we're going to hit a few more places along the way. So before we get started, let's finish up our Christmas tree. It's getting really full. You can almost not even see my tree anymore. So here it is, all finished. And again, hopefully you still have all your little um, Christmas tree tags. If not, you can go back to some of my older videos and find the link to get these. Or maybe you printed off the colored ones so you can have beautiful colored flags all over your international tree. So we've got um, the new ones today are USA, we've got Mexico, Canada, and Brazil. And there's my completed Holidays Around the World Christmas tree. So I hope you had fun with that. We also have been looking through this book about Christmas Around the World. And we're going to finish it up today. So we started off in Australia at the beach eating seafood. Then we talked about Christmas in England and Christmas crackers and Father Christmas. We talked about the Netherlands and the little wooden clogs they leave out. We went to France and learned about the Bouche de Noël, the Yule Log chocolate cake. We've been to Germany and learned about their Advent wreath and gingerbread houses. We've been to Sweden on St. Lucia Day. And now we're ready for Brazil, which is in South America. Children in Brazil celebrate by going to church at midnight. It's called Misa do Gallo. And they have a dinner of rice and beans, pork and pave, which is like a cake. So after their midnight mass, it might be at one o'clock in the morning. But when they leave the churches and cathedrals, they have fireworks and light shows on Christmas Eve. During their Christmas meal, they might have fresh fruits like mangoes, bananas, and papayas. Their Santa Claus wears a red silk suit because it's so hot in Brazil. Secret Santa, you may have played this before, is huge in Brazil. They draw names at the beginning of December and they give gifts all month long. And then on Christmas, it's the big reveal to find out who your secret Santa was. And just like in Australia, they like to spend Christmas Day on the beach. 
But why don't you hear it from my friend Priscilla? She'd love to tell you all about her Christmas in Brazil. Hi kids, my name is Priscilla, I'm from Brazil. And then the traditions for my country is do, uh, the 24th of December, we do Secret Santa. After the Secret Santa, we have a dinner. Also here in my country, Santa Claus is called Papai Noel. And Christmas, Merry Christmas, it's called Feliz Natal. I hope you guys have a good Christmas Eve. Enjoy. Ciao, ciao. Now we're going to leave Brazil and we're going to head over to Colombia, which is also in South America. Let's turn our globe. There we go. We're in the blue one, South America. So Colombia are known for huge light displays. I'll even show you a picture of one of them. And I have a couple of friends in Colombia that sent me some information. First of all, my friend Alfredo, he sent me something that says, in my country of Colombia and in my city of Barranquilla, we celebrate Dia de las Velitas, which is Candle Day. It is celebrated in honor of the Virgin Mary on December the 7th. In my city, we stay up until 3 a.m. on the 7th, which is really December 8th already. And we light the candles in front of the house on the sidewalk. In some cities, they do this on the night of the 7th around 9 p.m. He said, we really do this as a tradition since you are very little. And he even sent me some pictures of it. And so here's the pictures he sent me. He said that the little lanterns are made out of wood sticks and wrapped with colored paper. It looks like a beautiful tradition. And then Karen, in, also in Colombia, she's got all kinds of lights outside and she wants to show you what it looks like in her town in Colombia. All right, Karen, over to you. Hello everybody, my name is Karen, all the way from Colombia. Well, this is my video about how is Christmas and holiday celebrating back home. Uh, this is the first time in 10 years that I'm here, so I just want to show you a little bit what's going on over here. Today is December the 7th, so this is the day that officially holidays and Christmas is open for everybody. As you can notice, we have plenty of people on the streets, we have candles, and this is related to the Catholic celebration. Just to celebrate your Holy Mary, this is the way that the heaven is welcome here for being, well, holy, basically. So this is the way that we celebrate Christmas back home. My name is Karen, all the way from Colombia, wishing you Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. So that all happens on December the 7th and 8th. And then on December the 16th through the 24th, they have Novenas, which is a nine days before Christmas. They go to different houses for dinner, Christmas carols, prayers, games, and gifts. Some of the food that they might eat for Christmas is tamales, bunelos, and Natilla. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of those. Buenelos are like um, fried cheese balls. And then Natilla is um, a dessert. It's a custard with coconut and cinnamon. I thought you'd think this was interesting. On New Year's Eve in Colombia, to give them good luck for the next year, they like to wear yellow underwear. They carry a suitcase around the block, so hopefully they have travel in the new year. They put money in their pocket, and they eat 12 grapes, and they make 12 wishes for the new year. Those are some fun things that maybe you could try this year. The next country we're going to visit is called Guyana. And I have a friend there named Denisha, and I want to read to you what she said to me. This is what my family would do for the holidays. The week before the holiday, we would make our garlic pork and pickled onions. On the 23rd to the 24th, it's decoration time. My favorite. Doing the tree is not a big thing for most Guyanese, but some still go the extra mile like my family. We would do the tree, and after that, every Christmas Eve night, we would go to Georgetown, 
that's our country's capital, to the late shopping. It's just fun to take the kids to see Santa around 10 p.m. that same night. We would start baking bread for Christmas morning. Our Guyanese tradition is having pepper pot and bread for breakfast. That's a must in Guyanese home and black cake. From there on my family <clears throat> would have lunch and talk about all the silly things with lots of laughter. On New Year's Eve, they go to church every year. So on New Year's morning, they would be there together. And then New Year's Day, they visit their in-laws because they wanna show respect and that family is very important. Thank you, Denisha. And I also wanna show you some pictures of what she was talking about, the pepper pot and the black cake that they eat in Guyana. Now we're gonna to travel to Peru. All over South America, nativity scenes are huge for decorations. And Peru, they have lots of them too. And my friend Maria actually gave me one as a present, so I wanted to show it to you. So here are the little figures. This is one of my favorites in my collection. So here are Mary and Joseph. And then I have the tiny baby Jesus. And it also came with a cow and a donkey. So I'm gonna set this one up here. There we go, now I have our nativity scene from Peru. And that actually came from my friend Maria and she's here to tell you a little bit about two countries. She was born in Canada, like I was, but now she lives in Peru. So she's gonna tell you about her traditions both in Canada when she was little and now that she lives in Peru with her family. All right, Maria, your turn. Hello, my name is Maria. I am originally from Canada and now I live in Peru. And I'm gonna tell everybody a little bit about our traditions. Now, in Canada, when I was growing up, we all had very different traditions, me and my friends, because the thing about Canada is, is no one's really Canadian. Everybody has their own unique heritage, where their parents came from, where their grandparents came from. So my father was from Italy and my mother, her um, heritage is Hungarian. So we had our own family um, traditions uh, every single year we used to have an advent calendar. I don't have one to show you because now I live in Peru, but it was this box, this really skinny, long box, and it had 24 little squares, little doors you open of the cardboard box, and in every one was a little square of chocolate, and not the good chocolate, just little tiny chocolates, and they were so delicious to us as kids, and every single year we had this same little skinny box advent calendar, and in my family we used to go to church on Christmas Eve. And we didn't, my mom never made a turkey or anything like that. Um, she used to make appetizers, little tiny, little tiny, um, you know, empanadas or little tiny um, um, chicken nuggets or little, little things that we would eat on Christmas Eve on the 24th. And then we would go to church, late church, like 10 o'clock at night. And then when we came back from church, we got to open all of our presents. Every present we got to open on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas Day, Santa would come. Then we would get all our presents from Santa and our stockings filled with all sorts of surprises. And that was our, that was our tradition in Canada because it was just our family. My mom's family that lived in Canada, they, were, they lived far. And my dad's whole family lived in Italy. So... Our Christmas traditions were really just my family. And even living in Canada, my friends were Dutch and my friends were German. So they had also had very different traditions than us. And now as an adult with my own children, I live in Peru. And in Peru, I think our traditions are quite similar actually. On Christmas Eve, um, we usually go to church 
and then we open all of our presents. But Peruvians, something that's very, very Christmassy for Peruvians is they eat lots of panettone, which is actually a Christmas bread that's from Italy. So I'm very familiar with it. And we eat lots of panettone and drink hot chocolate. And um, Santa will come here too. And he, we will open all of his presents on Christmas morning and spend... Christmas Day or Christmas Eve with our families. Every family does it differently, of course. So um, us, we do our celebration on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day is pretty relaxed here. So I hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas. And it was so nice to tell you about my traditions and my family, first in Canada and now in Peru with my daughters. Bye. Awesome. Thank you, Maria. Now we're going to leave South America and we're going to head to some of the islands in the Caribbean. And I've spent some Christmases there, so I have a few pictures of the de decorations that I've seen in the Caribbean. A lot of the traditions there are similar to African, European, or North American countries because they all kind of came from other places to um, live in the Caribbean. But some of the unique things are in Jamaica, they have something called Junkanoo, which are parades with mass dancers and drummers. And they have grand markets with shopping and food that are open all night. It sounds like what Denisha was talking about that they do in Guyana. In Antigua and also Trinidad and Tobago, they have something called Moco Jumbies, which are men that stand on stilts and wear colorful costumes and they perform dances. In Montserrat and St. Kitts, they have carnival festivals and parades all December long. And in Haiti, this one's really interesting. It would never happen here. Houses are open on Christmas Eve with lights on until around 3 a.m. and parents sometimes don't know where their kids are all night. Older children are responsible for taking care of the little kids. Yikes. All right, so that's all I have for the Caribbean. Now we're headed on up to North America. And we're gonna talk about Mexico. So here's our page in the book about Mexico. It says, Children in Mexico celebrate Las Posadas. So I bet you are familiar with what this child is doing. Do you know what it is? Have you ever done this at a birthday party? Yeah, they're hitting a pinata. So on Christmas, children in Mexico get to hit a special pinata. It looks like a seven point star. They like to celebrate Christmas from December the 12th through January the 6th. This is a picture of something that might, they might eat for Christmas. It's called the Three Kings Cake. There's a little baby hidden inside, and if a person finds it, they have to host a party on February the 2nd. Hmm, if you're from Louisiana, that's gonna sound really familiar, isn't it? We'll talk about that later. So, it says here that children dress up as Mary and Joseph. So this is how they celebrate Las Posadas. They dress up and they go from house to house singing and asking if they can come in. It's kind of like when Mary and Joseph were looking for somewhere to go when she was going to have baby Jesus. So they do this for the nine days before Christmas and they go in and they have a Las Posadas party. Some of the things that they like to eat for Christmas are tamales, churros, Mexican hot chocolate, Mexican stew, or the king cake, which is called Rosca de Reyes. And children get presents from the three wise men. And I bet you've probably heard the song Feliz Navidad, right? That's how they say Merry Christmas in Spanish. And it goes, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Prospero San Josef Felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Have you heard that song before? 
Well, now you can sing Merry Christmas in Spanish. So one of my friends lives in Mexico and she's all dressed up in friend wear tree and she wants to tell you about Christmas in Mexico. Hi everyone, my name is Lily and I am from Mexico. So I want to share with you what we do for Christmas, how we celebrate Christmas, what are our traditions. So there are two things that I want to highlight, one of them is posadas and the other one is what we do on Christmas Eve. So a posada is uh, when we have someone dressing up as pregnant Mary and then we have someone dressing up as Joseph and we go from house to house knocking on the doors and uh, looking for shelter of course and people would say no to us and they would shut the door. All of this happens while, with a candle, with a light up candle and people singing. Uh, what you can hear in the background, that's the, the uh, posada song that we sing. Uh, at the end, uh, we reached to a house where people would open the door to us and we would be singing and happy. We come in, we pray, and after the prayer we have a small gathering where we share tamales, we share ponche, which is based on uh, fruit, it's a hot uh, drink. Uh, we share sweet bread and so many other things. One of the things that we do at uh, the posada as well is that we sing. And a pos posadas happen, it's a novena, they happen from December 16th to December 24th. And the second thing that I want to point out to you is how we celebrate uh, Christmas Eve. So one of the things that you do is that you wear pajamas, right? So here in Mexico, it doesn't happen at all. We dress up, we wear makeup, we wear high heels, you know, and we go to church, to mass, and after that, when we come back home, we have a dinner, like a big dinner, a huge one, where we share, and at the strike of 12, we eat grapes, we share them, you know, we ask for wishes, and uh, our purposes for New Year, and this is what happens uh, here in Mexico. I hope you guys understood my accent. I know it's a hard one to understand, but I tried my best. Guys, See you, bye-bye. Thanks, Lily. Isn't her face paint amazing? She looks so cute. So another thing that's popular in Mexico for decorations is poinsettia flowers. I'm sure you've seen these before, the beautiful red flowers you see around Christmas time. The story is there was a child in Mexico and they were on their way to midnight mass, but they didn't have a gift for the king. So they decided to pick up some weeds along the side of the road and they brought them and they set them at the bottom of the nativity scene and a miracle happened. They turned into beautiful red flowers that bloom at Christmas time and they're called poinsettias. So I thought in honor of Mexico, we would make our own poinsettia craft and it looks like this. Isn't that pretty? And you can make, a, make one of these too. So what I'll say to you with this video is a pattern that looks like this. So you can print it off and you can print it off on white paper. You can even print it off on thicker paper and you can um, cut them out and you can either color these or I printed mine on colored paper and did it that way. So you're gonna have two leaves and three petals, but you'll need to print a couple of these off because you need six petals and six leaves. So what I did to start off with was I actually have a small paper plate and I turned it upside down. And then I cut out my green leaves and I put all the leaves down on the plate first. I'll show you what that looked like. So I glued them all down and then I put my red leaves on top. Then I needed something yellow in the center and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. So this one I put, I had, some big buttons so I put a button in the middle but if you have some pom-poms you could use that or jewels or sequins or even this was a big fuzzy pipe cleaner and I rolled it up I could have done this as well so anything you've got and then I've got a pretty glittery pipe cleaners so I just did a loop on the back of the plate so you could hang this up somewhere you could even put it on your Christmas tree so now you know the story of the poinsettia and that it's popular in Mexico. 
And now we're going to travel to probably my favorite country because this is where I was born and it's Canada. And you got to hear a little bit about Canadian traditions from Maria, but here's a little bit more. Some Canadians like to say that Santa lives in Canada because Canada goes pretty close to the North Pole, so maybe he does live in Canada. In Canada, lots of snow sports and activities are very popular at Christmas time, like skiing and skating and tobogganing and hockey. In Toronto, there's a huge Santa Claus parade, and it's been going on for over 100 years. Here's a picture. In Canada, some people like to do their presents on Christmas Eve, and some do it on Christmas Day. And maybe on Christmas Eve, they just open one gift, or maybe they do their st stockings on Christmas Eve. For dinner, typical meals are turkey and all the um, yummy sides. Or in Nova Scotia, they like to eat lobster. In Quebec, they like to have meat pie or stew with pig's feet. Ew! I don't think I want to eat that. They also have a, um, on January 6th in Quebec, they have Le Fête de Roy. And they eat a cake with a bean inside. And whoever finds it gets to be a king or queen for a day. Bet you guys would like that. That's also similar to something in Louisiana. When we talked about England, we made a Christmas cracker, right? And that was something that I like to do when I lived in Canada. And even in the United States, I've done it too. So I thought I would tell you one of the jokes that you might find in a Christmas cracker. All right, ready? Knock, knock. Lettuce. Lettuce in. It's cold out here. How about this one? Why did the gingerbread man go to the doctor? Because he was feeling kind of crummy. <laughs> so those are some of the examples of some of the silly jokes you might find in a Christmas cracker. So also in Canada, in the province of Newfoundland, they do something called mummering and they dress up in silly costumes and they knock on people's doors and those people have to guess who it is. If they can guess who their friends are, then they come in and they have a party. But if not, the person in the house dresses up too and they come and join in and they go on and knock on other doors. It looks really silly. I'll show you a picture of it. In Nova Scotia, they have a similar tradition but it's called bell snickling and they dress up in masks and fur kind of like that uh, like that mean Krampus guy from Austria. When we talked about Hanukkah you met my cousin Emma. She lives in Canada and she's back to tell you a little bit about what she does for Christmas. Hi um, my name is Emma if you don't know me. Um, I'm Ashley's cousin. I live in Canada. Hi. So it's a tradition in our house for each year, we get a new ornament for a Christmas tree. So this year, 2020, I got an ugly Christmas sweater with my name in the year. Um, these are really special to me. I have one from when I was a really little, for the first year when I was born in 2009. And they're just really special to me for Christmas. Obviously, um, for me and my family, we get up at 7 and we go downstairs and we open gifts. And it's really fun, and then later that night we get to get together and like have food and hang out and just celebrate and feel how lucky we are. Bye. All right, one more thing while we're talking about Canada. This is something that we've kind of mentioned a couple of times, but now I can explain to you what it means. So when we went to Australia and England, we talked about Boxing Day. And now that we're in Canada, they celebrate Boxing Day too. And being from Canada, people in the United States always used to ask me, what is Boxing Day? It's the day after Christmas. So does that mean that we box up all our Christmas decorations and put them away? No. Nowadays, it's just a time to go out and there's sales in all the stores and it's just a time to be with friends and family. But a long time ago, when it first started, it was a way for people to box up things like, um, food and clothes for people that didn't have any and they would give it to the less fortunate. So that's what Boxing Day is. And lots of different countries around the world celebrate Boxing Day on December 26th. 
Okay, we've made it back to the United States of America. And a lot of you have lots of different traditions in your families because maybe your families have come from all over the world. Some of these might sound familiar. Children in the USA celebrate by hanging their stockings for Santa Claus to fill. They attend church services. They ha leave out Christmas cookies for Santa. And they hear the story the night before Christmas. You guys know that one, right? It's a good one. People in the United States love to decorate their houses inside and out. And people like to go and take a picture with Santa and sit on his knee and tell them what they want for Christmas. Baking cookies are popular, Christmas cards, hanging stockings, watching Christmas movies. Do you guys have a favorite? I think the Santa Claus. Home Alone, Elf, Polar Express. I have so many favorites. Gingerbread houses are popular. Anybody ever do cranberry and popcorn garland for their Christmas tree? Most people in the United States have gifts on Christmas morning after Santa Claus arrives. Some people even do something called a Christmas pickle and they have a pickle ornament and they hide it somewhere in their tree and then someone has to find it and then that person gets to hide it for someone else to find. In New York City, there's lots of big Christmas displays. We have the Rockefeller Christmas tree, and there's the Radio City Rockettes, and even the ball drop for New Year's Eve is very popular, and people watch it on TV from all over the United States. Let me tell you a little bit about my traditions and the things that I used to do as a little kid. When I was little, I always used to make a countdown calendar. So I've made one to show you today. And it looks like this. It says 2020 Christmas countdown. And I've cut out all of these rings. And I'm gonna tear one off a day until it's Christmas. So that tells me how many days there are left until Christmas. And then something else that my family's always done is on Christmas Eve, we always got to unwrap two presents. So we'd come home from the church service where we got to hold candles and sing songs, and then we'd get to open up one present that was a new ornament to put on our tree, and the other one was a new pair of pajamas that we would get to wear that night. And then Christmas morning, my sister and I would get up and we'd go and see what was under the tree. And the first thing we always got to open was all four of us in my family got to unpack um, or unwrap their stockings and they were full of little goodies. And then of course we got to the things that were under the tree. So those are some of my Christmas traditions. And I'll even show you some pictures from some of the Christmases in the past. Something that I think is really popular in the United States and in Canada, not something that I've done, but a lot of my friends and family have done, is called Elf on the Shelf. What it is, I'll show you some pictures of what they look like. There are these little dolls and people have done them in classroom, like teachers have done them in classrooms, but it's mostly for a family. I bet you guys know about Elf on the Shelf, don't you? Some of you probably have one. They're very silly, aren't they? Here are some pictures from my cousin Nate and Emma because they have Elf on the Shelf in Canada and some of my little friends in Louisiana might recognize these silly elves. They come with costumes and games and furniture and all kinds of fun things. So we talked about the king's cake 
in the Three Kings cake in Mexico. And we talked about the La Fête de Roy in Canada, in Quebec. And in the United States, in Louisiana, they have king cake. This is a picture of it. You can start eating king cake on January 6th, and then you can eat it all the way up to Mardi Gras. And it has a tiny little baby Jesus inside. And the last place that I want to talk to you about is part of the United States, but it's in Hawaii. And it's quite a bit different than the Christmas that you and I have. Because, like Australia, they have a surfing Santa Claus that's wearing a Hawaiian shirt and shorts, and he's pulled along by dolphin. Have you ever heard of the Christmas song about Hawaiian Christmas? Let me tell you how you can say and sing Merry Christmas in Hawaii. It's called Mili Kalikimaka. Mili Kalikimaka. And there's a song about it. This is how it goes. Mili Kalikimaka is the thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. That's the island greeting that we send to you from the land where palm trees sway. Here we know that Christmas will be green and bright, the sun to shine by day and all the stars at night. Mili Kalikimaka is Hawaii's way to say Merry Christmas to you. So now you can say Mili Kalikimaka, Merry Christmas in Hawaiian. So that's it, we've made it all the way around the world. We started with a surfing Santa Claus in Australia and we ended with a surfing Santa Claus in Hawaii. So now that we've talked about all of the different holiday traditions around the world, what are your favorite traditions? Oh, awesome, I love it. Well, hopefully you guys have heard some new ones that you can try and add to the traditions that you already have. All right, now I have a little quiz for you to see if you remember what we've learned. I have this little book here that has some of the people and places that we've learned about. Let's see if you recognize any of these. I'll read you the story, and then in the back we have some symbols from the different holidays, and we have to figure out what page they fit on. So this is Holiday Lights, Holiday Celebrations Around the World because we've found out that there's lots of different lights that are used in all these different holidays. Flicker, flicker, Hanukkah lights, lasting lights on happy nights. This is the one that we learned about today. Shine, shine, Las Posadas lights, searching lights on happy nights. That was the one in Mexico. Sparkle, sparkle, Diwali lights, greeting lights on happy nights. This one was in India. Glow, glow, Kwanzaa lights, teaching lights on happy nights. Gleam, gleam, St. Lucia lights, crowning lights on happy nights. Twinkle, twinkle, Christmas lights, sharing lights on happy nights. Okay, do you think you can help me now? Let's figure out where these go. So let's start with hmm, this one. Do you know where this goes? What page or what holiday was the menorah? Is it, which one? Did you say Hanukkah? That's right. The menorah goes with Hanukkah. Ta-da! Okay, what's next? Should we do this one? Now, I don't know if you remember this one from the picture because we didn't actually talk about it. It looks like this. It's wheat. And they actually plant the seeds before the holiday and then when the holiday comes around, they tie them with ribbon. Do you remember seeing that one? Ah, okay. It's here for St. Lucia Day right there in the middle of the two little girls. There we go. How about we do this one next? Do you remember where it was? It's, that's right, it's a pinata. And what holiday does it go with, or what country? We learned about it today, that's right. It's Mexico and Las Posadas. So here's our pinata. Okay. 
how about the tree? Lots of countries have trees, but what holiday does this celebrate? That's right, Christmas. So let's go back to this page and we'll add the Christmas tree. Okay, we've got two more. All right, do you remember where this goes? It's one of those lanterns, the little bowl lanterns. Was it? No, it's not this page. It's not this page. Ah, that's right. It was in India for Diwali. There we go. So where's the last one go? So we have another candle holder. We actually made one of these, right? Which one? That's right. This one goes on here for Kwanzaa. Excellent job. You guys are super smart and you've learned so much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that you can remember some of the things that we talked about and I'm gonna send you a copy of this book that um, it'll be a link connected to the video that your parents or your teacher can print out for you. That was this one with the cool pictures. You have the coloring page that I sent you from our first video, so I'll send that again so you can color it. And then I'll even give you a version of the book that we just read that you can color yourself. So now that we've made it all around the world, let's take a look at a few more Santa Claus pictures from all over the globe. And have you seen my tree now? It's almost full with all kinds of decorations, but I still have some more to add today. Let me show you what ornaments I have to add to the tree today. Okay, so I don't have any from South America because I've actually never been there before. But I do have a few from the Caribbean. We talked about Antigua today. Well, this little puffy guy is from the island of Antigua, which is kind of funny because I don't think they've ever seen snow there. And then this one also came from the Caribbean and it reminds me of something that you might see in some of the African countries because it's the paper beads that they roll up and make into ornaments. This one is from the island of St. Martin in the Caribbean. And this little guy is from St. Thomas, and he's like a beach bag with your beach umbrella and your towel. And I have this beautiful ornament that I don't actually know where it came from. I'm thinking it must have come from one of the Caribbean islands because it's similar to things that I've seen there. And it's a beautiful little doll with braided hair. All right, now I have a few from Canada. I have this keychain that my cousins gave me for my birthday. We're gonna add Canada on here. I have a lobster trap ornament from Nova Scotia because remember they like to eat lobster for Christmas. I have one from the Capilano Suspension Bridge in Vancouver. And then I have one from, a couple from the United States. I have this guy catching lobsters in Bar Harbor, Maine. I have this one from Alaska, because I've been there several times on a cruise ship. And then my last one, because I live in Tennessee, is going to be a Tennessee state shape ornament. Wow, that's a lot of ornaments for that little tree, but it still needs a topper, doesn't it? What do you have on the top of your Christmas tree? Maybe you have a star or an angel. Well, for this tree, 
because it's full of things from around the world, I have two things to put on top. I'm going to put the whole world and I even have a little passport ornament. Yikes, I don't think I can reach from here. But I'll show you these and then I'm gonna put them on the top of my tree. So that's it guys, we've done it. We've traveled all over the world and I hope you've had so much fun with me and you've learned lots and I want to wish you the very happiest Merry Christmas or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or any of the other holidays that you might celebrate. Bye!